guys, welcome back. Uh, my name is Steve, I'm here with Fitness HQ and today we're going to be looking at the level 3 circulatory system. Now before we get started, I just want to remind you that there's a, a few topics that's going to come up in this that are what we've covered in level 2 already. I just want to emphasize that you still need to know these so don't feel like you're just going to have to skip through these phases because they do come up in level 3 examples as well. Uh, so we're not going to really um, do too much on these at the moment, we'll quickly go over um, You've got your, your functions in the circulatory system, pulmonary and systemic circulation, uh, the structure of the heart with its chambers. Uh, we're going to start off this session um, uh, forwarding through to the valves of the heart. So in level two we didn't really cover these in too much detail so uh, we'll go over a little bit about the different valves and what their purpose is within the heart and you know, why they're so important. Uh, so you can see here, uh, there's two different types of valve. We've got the atrioventricular valve uh, and we've got the semilunar valve. Atrioventricular, or AV, um, if you think you've got the atrium and you've got the ventricle, it's, you know, it's the valve in between basically. So uh, it's got a complicated name but it's broken down quite easily. Uh, and as it says, in the position between the two chambers um, and the main purpose is to prevent backflow from the ventricle back up into the atrium. So once that blood pumps down, the valve shuts. Uh, and then with the semilunar valves or the SL valve, uh, this is at the, the, the bottom or the, the, the back of the ventricles where the blood is leaving from the ventricle. Uh, and what happens is that when the ventricles pump the blood out, they then close so that no blood comes back into the heart. So it's a nice little circuit, nice little closed system to make sure that there's no backflow and no potential blood loss from wherever the blood needs to go around the body. Uh, so you can see in a little diagram here, uh, this is a more structured version of the heart. Uh, we've got some labels. Uh, and what we can do at this point now is we can break down the valves into individual valves. So these two here, are both atrioventricular valves. Now on the right, we've got tri for right, I generally think. Um, we've got a tricuspid valve over here on the right. On the left, we've got the bicuspid, often referred to as the mitral or mitral valve as well. So they're both our atrioventricular valves, left and right side. <clears throat> Down at the semilunar valves, it's a little bit easier really because it, it's linked to the artery or the vein that they're pumping out to. So if we look onto the right hand side first, we've got the pulmonary valve. So that's going into the pulmonary artery. Um, and we've got so the pulmonary vein, not a pulmonary artery. Um, and we've got the aortic valve as well, which is obviously linking to the aorta. Um, and again, their job, stop blood coming back into the heart. Um, so we've got four valves in total, um, two atrioventricular, two semilunar. Now the blood supply itself then, this is quite important to know really, um, generally when, when the heart rate increases, systolic blood pressure tends to also rise rapidly as the heart's contracting. Now throughout that process, um, as, as systolic pressure increases, um, the, the beats of systolic, um, the phase, actually get longer because it's, it's creating a, a much larger pump, uh, whereas the diastolic phase actually takes less time because it's getting blood into the heart very, very quickly, and it's then being pumped out uh, through, through a much larger force than normal. So that's kind of what this is explaining. So um, anyway, you just said it, it says up on the board, it contradicts what you're saying. So you said that the systole takes longer, but it's saying up on the board, it's a constant. Which is a constant, it? it's the beat, it's it's constant, constant, uh, change, yeah. but it's a diastolic phase which reduces because it's the time between beats because the heart rate's got quicker. It doesn't give itself with any rest time. Oh, yeah. And that's a question on the exam that they ask quite a lot of, don't they? So, just, uh, we'll just edit that bit out and just read a little bit of that slide. Yeah, I just felt it roll and I just flip it out. Okay, cheers. So, I'll just carry on. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, so. Right, just, just recap and deliver it. <clears throat> oh, right, all right, okay, got you. Uh, okay, guys, so we're going to look at the cardiac blood supply next. Uh, pretty important in terms of how your heart rate is increasing for exercise uh, and what actually changes through the systole and diastole phase of contraction. Uh, now they're pretty consistent through, through rest. Um, now as you exercise though, what happens is the systolic phase remains constant but because the heart's beating faster, what happens is the diastolic phase actually shortens much more rapidly and that allows your heart to beat quicker. Um, 
get oxygen and get blood um, pumped quicker around the body. Now, uh, because of this, because the heart's contracting quite a lot and it's getting less blood potentially towards the coronary circulation, uh, what actually happens is you're at risk of things like angina or uh, myocardial infarction, which is uh, uh, well, your heart attack essentially. Um, so there's a few things to look out for really, and the, the risks associated with um, exercise, especially through high intensity exercise. Uh, linking onto the coronary blood supply then, um, as you can see here from the, the little structure of the heart, um, you can see it actually starts from the aorta uh, and it branches off into the left and right section. Um, now, the, you, you can see the left section actually branches off two ways. The left side, if you remember back from level two, it actually pumps to the whole body. So, the left side generally needs a larger uh, uh, percentage of the, the blood circulating back to the heart itself, to the myocardium. Um, so, you've got uh, the left anterior descending uh, coronary artery coming down here, and then you've got the one that wraps around the back, the circumflex artery. Uh, and they, they go into all the walls around the ventricle in particular so it can, it can get more oxygen and pump larger quantities of blood to the body. Whereas on the right side, we've got the right coronary artery. Um, that's going to surround the right ventricle, the walls around the right ventricle. Um, there's only one, as it, that job is generally just to pump blood back to the lungs, so it needs less amount of force um, as it's got less distance and less amount of blood that it needs to pump. Uh, now the main thing to remember with coronary supply is essentially it goes from the heart to the heart and back to the heart. So it starts here at the aorta. Um, now uh, depending on how much exercise you do, it will depend on how much blood actually is filtered back to the heart. But from the aorta it branches off back to the muscle of the heart this time, not the chambers. And that's kind of a key thing to remember. Uh, the muscle itself, the myocardium, uses that oxygen. Uh, and it will filter the, the, the deoxygenated blood from the myocardium back into the right hand side of the heart um, and then that sort of concludes the, the coronary circuit you could say. So like I said, it never actually leaves the heart. So any questions that ever arise on exams um, linking to coronary blood supply it's always staying in the heart. That's the kind of key thing to pick up from this. Okay guys, so um, linking in with the coronary supply, we're going to look at a couple of like, disease processes that's linked to the heart. Uh, now, what happens quite frequently, especially through things like inactivity, uh, through, through poor diet, um, what can happen is you get a, a buildup of like uh, minerals and proteins and fats and they sort of deposit in, in the arteries and they, they stick to the walls. Um, now, what, what tends to happen is that um, when, when, a, when we're not using fats, they're transported around the body through what we call LDLs or low density lipoproteins. And I'll get them up on the board in a second for you. Uh, and, but because, because it's very like, fatty and sticky, they, they generally tend to stick to the walls, uh, especially in the arteries. <clears throat> and as a result of this, we can get something called a myocardial ischemia, whereby there's, there's, a, there's a blockage in the artery and it's restricting blood flow. Um, especially back towards the, the heart itself or throughout the heart. Uh, now it can be a partial blockage um, or it can even escalate to, to, a set, to the actual severity of a complete blockage. Uh, now naturally if you've got a complete blockage the next step from there is the myocardial infarction which I mentioned before where it's like a complete heart attack um, which naturally can be, can be quite fatal in a lot of cases and a, a lot of the time it's to do with the low density or what we call very low density lipoproteins. Um, now the low density lipoproteins are what we often refer to as bad cholesterol. Now they're not, they're not necessarily bad unless we have too much of them. So they serve a purpose. If we have excessive amounts of uh, nutrients in our body, an excessive amount of calories, uh, these are responsible for dispersing them around the body. Um, so they can take them sometimes to the adipose tissue underneath the skin. They can take them, sometimes it will go to organs. Uh, it's, it's not necessarily that they're, they're bad. They've got a job to do. They make sure that fats aren't being stored in the blood vessels. But as a result, they tend to get stuck in there as well, and that's why we associate them with bad cholesterol. Now, oppositely to that, uh, we have what's called a high-density lipoprotein, or HDL. Now, these tend to do the opposite thing, really. So, they take the, 
the, the, the, the fats and the, the, the low density cholesterol uh, and they, they always get rid of it so they, they're often referred to as the good cholesterol. As more often than not, these will be taking um, things like fats to the liver and the liver can then be uh, utilise the fats and we can actually you know, use it as energy or uh, for a number of other things in the body. So hence why we've got what we class as good and bad cholesterol. Um, <clears throat> naturally there's a lot more to it and it's, it's more to do with the, the proportions that we have, if anything. Um, now going back to that like uh, mineral deposits in the arteries, um, one of the sort of arterial diseases that we can get is called atherosclerosis. Now, as you can see from the diagram, it's where about inside the walls of the artery, you've got this buildup of like fats and minerals and, um, and other proteins as well. And if you look at the actual area inside, it gets much less and less and less. Um, so the amount of blood that's able to pass through it is naturally going to be restricted. So atherosclerosis naturally links into things like coronary heart disease, it's going to cause things like ischemia and potential uh, myocardial infarctions as well. So uh, not a nice thing to have. And again, it, it's a lot of the time due to really poor diet in most cases uh, and a lack of activity as well, which is also going to, going to add to this process as you know, your nutrients aren't being pushed through as, as often as they should be. Uh, now, on top of um, atherosclerosis, we have what's called arteriosclerosis. So it's not up on the board. Uh, but essentially, arteriosclerosis is where the, the actual um, outer shell of the artery it thickens and it hardens uh, and it loses its elasticity basically. So, if you imagine this is the normal size of your artery. Now, when, when, you, when you're pumping blood for exercise, the artery generally tends to expand or vasodilate. Uh, now, through arteriosclerosis, the, the artery isn't able to do that. So, the blood is being pumped at much higher pressures, but your artery isn't able to expand, dilate and allow that blood to pass through. So again, it's going to restrict the amount of blood that can pass through. And because of the high amounts of pressures, it can cause, um, it can cause you know, bursts in the arteries. Again, it's going to link in with things like um, ischemia, um, myocardial, heart attacks, etc. Et so both can have really severe results. Uh, and simple changes like doing more exercise, Eating healthier diets, getting a balanced diet, is going to help with reducing the chances and reducing the risks associated with these. Um, going back to vasoconstriction, we've, we've kind of mentioned that already, so I'm going to sort of skip straight past this bit. Vasodilation, same thing again. Uh, cholesterol, I've kind of just mentioned it. Um, so here it goes through um, your high density and low density lipid proteins here. So it's kind of just um, backing up what I've just mentioned about the good and the bad and going you know, away from the heart to the heart. So I'll skip past this part. Uh, just to finish off with the valve salver effect. Um, now, this comes into a case a lot of the time with uh, gym goers who have not really been taught how to do exercises properly. Uh, it's generally when you, you hold your breath and you, you do an exercise. Uh, and as a result, it spikes your blood pressure. So naturally, uh, if you already have um, an arterial issue or you have a coronary issue, uh, something like the valve salve effect can lead to much more severe issues. Um, now, in, in most cases, what tends to happen, let's take a deadlift for example. Again, go back to like your gym fail videos, you'll see a guy, he'll hold his breath, he'll pick up the weight, and all of a sudden, he'll just like fall over and he'll, he'll faint. Um, and that a lot of the time is to do with the massive spike of blood pressure Blood gets dispersed everywhere else because you're not breathing, you're not getting new oxygen in your body uh, and it restricts blood going to your brain essentially. And, uh, naturally when your brain's not getting oxygen, you hit the deck. Um, and that's generally what can happen through the valve salve effect. So quite unsafe, you should always focus on breathing uh, when you're doing your exercises uh, just to protect your heart, protect your brain, make sure you're not going to pass out. Um, uh, and that pretty much finishes it off. So. Um, that's essentially what the valve salver effect or the valve salver manoeuvre is. Uh, and that pretty much sums up the circulatory system. So again, any questions, any concerns, feel free to comment below. Uh, we'll get back to your questions as soon as possible. Cheers for tuning in, guys.